Hey everybody, how's it going? I am here at the uh, site of the Lakeview Gusher. Uh, this is between Taft and Maricopa on the west side of San Joaquin, southern San Joaquin Valley, about uh, 50 miles southwest of Bakersfield. The Lakeview Gusher blew out on March 10th, 1910 at a depth of 2,225 feet and it blew for 544 days. No one knows why this thing never caught fire. Many of the gushers did, but this was the biggest and the baddest of all the gushers. And uh, it flowed, uh, before they got it shut down, it flowed 9 million barrels of oil, and only about four of those were recovered. So uh, anyhow, let's flip this thing around and check out the Lakeview Gusher site. All right, walking into the crater. of the Lakeview Gusher. That is the head pipe, the original head pipe for the Gusher for the well. And this was the Lakeview number one. That was the name of the well. And that is why they call it the Lakeview Gusher. And they called it Lakeview because out there, if you look, you'll see that little patch of green kind of center frame there. That's where Buena Vista Lake was. Buena Vista Lake no longer exists in very 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 heavy rain years it might get some water in it but for the most part it is now just farmland but at that time it was still a lake and one of the issues they had was trying to get the oil stopped before it got to the lake and to do that down you see down this draw here they dug channels and i can't remember how many uh reservoirs they dug between here and the lake to try to capture the oil and keep it from getting down there and they were for the most part successful uh, some of the lake did get some oil in it but not very much most of the oil was captured in the reservoirs and you heard me say that they only recovered four million barrels a lot of it just seeped back into the ground they didn't have time to line them with anything and back then they really didn't align those sumps anyway so uh but uh anyway this head pipe is not the original head pipe. Uh, the original head pipe was blown completely. I should say it was eroded completely away. The, the uh, well blew not just oil, but water and a whole bunch of sand. I have a series of photographs I'll put in here uh, of what this looked like. Here you see the gusher shortly after it blew in with some uh, gentlemen standing out in front of it showing off. This is a little later before the derrick had uh, been blown away. You can see how much sand has begun to cover the area. This is after the derrick and uh, all the rig was gone. You can see how powerful this gusher was. And here's after it started to calm down. You can see the sandbags where they built the levees up and some of the sandbags are still visible. They uh, built these levees up to try to help contain the oil, but much of this, uh, the ground level was higher than this. It was up quite a bit, uh, higher than where we are right now. But uh, as the uh, well began to blow, it, you'll see in the photographs, the crater that it eventually created. But uh, here you can see all this, uh, Earth here is just still completely infused with oil. And uh, it's not hot today, it's about 85 degrees, but some of this stuff, I know when it gets really hot, it's kind of tarry and soft. You can see some of the old uh, wood there and over there. And, and I don't know if that was part of the recovery project or if that might have been something that was original. Uh, you can see over there by my truck, there's a concrete uh, works there, and I don't know if that was maybe where a boiler was situated, nor do I know if that was anything original to the Lakeview Number 1 well, or if it was something that they built later for, uh, for part of the uh, trying to capture this and recover some of this oil. Right here, when we thought this was cool.
these are old cable tool bits. Now, again, I don't know if this was part of the original uh, well or if this came when they tried to uh, re-drill it or, or do whatever they did with this well, but those are old cable tool bits buried in the oil. At its peak, this well was flowing 90,000 barrels a day of oil and no other well in California has ever come close. I climbed up here on top and you can see that all the oil that's still left up here Quite a mess. Right, you can see a little pit here that was dug and some pipes running out of it over there. But uh, you can see this retaining structure that they built here. Most likely to attempt to keep the oil channeled and flowing that way and not get away from them going that way as well. But uh, from up here, you can really get a sense of how big this crater is that was created. And as I said, uh, much deeper at one point and full of oil. All right, uh, from here, you can actually see the, see all that farmland out there. That was all underwater in 1910 that was all part of Buena Vista Lake so you can see that they how close it was and why they were trying to keep the oil out of it and you can see why they call this lake view number one had a really nice view of the lake I'm sure but up here even a little further away there is still quite a bit of the tar and But most of it flowed that way down that draw. All right, looking back up towards where the uh, gusher was, you can see the flow pattern, how the oil came down this draw. Still some pretty cool looking patterns here. I uh, posted a pictorial history of this on a uh, California History Facebook page some time back. And uh, I was reminded of how it is so easy for people today looking at uh, how things are today and what, uh, what happens in situations like this today that that is the way things happened a hundred years ago, over a hundred years ago. And uh, people said, oh, how come they didn't sue this company? I, I don't. I think Union Oil had purchased this well from the uh, from the company. The a small company started drilling this well and ran out of money, and it was purchased. I'm almost positive by Union Oil. I've got the history of it at home, but uh, they wondered why Union Oil wasn't sued and how come they didn't have to do this and have. To do do that and you know i said it was 100 110 years ago uh things were different well they could couldn't they be sued now and it's like well i believe the statute of limitations has run out on that but feel free to try but anyway you can see how this ran down uh with the way this is all kind of even here and uh, smooth this leftover oil here, I would assume that these kind of were standing on a kind of a dike right now and a high spot over there. I would assume this is one of the places where they created a, uh, a reservoir to try to uh, contain this stuff. Uh, that's just uh, a guess, but it seems right. But just, I mean, we're, I don't know, 
150 yards away from the wellhead and you can see what a mess this had already made and uh looking down that way i'm sure it, there's probably oil all the way down to the close to the edge of the lake all right well i've always uh been fascinated by the lakeview gusher and by the Actually, by the oil fields of that day, I've never studied them that in depth as far as details, but uh, same with the railroads though. I love the history of things. I love the history of the oil field. My dad was an oil guy. My granddad was an oil guy. Uncles, cousins, and I even did it for a little while outside my railroad career before I went to work there and then while I was laid off. I didn't like it enough to keep doing it. But I still like the history. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little piece on the Lakeview Gusher. Uh, if you're interested, it's all over the Internet. Plenty of pictures and stories about it. Go check it out if you think it's cool. Keep shooting me the ideas. Drop in the comments below. Shoot me an email at motorpoet59 at gmail.com. Like, share, subscribe. Click on the bell if you want to be notified of future content. And we'll see you all later.